Is it a bird? Is it a plane? No, it's a 1978 Ford Thunderbird. Hello everyone, my name is Edward and welcome to another review here on Ed's Auto Reviews where I present to you the 1978 Ford Thunderbird Diamond Jubilee. The Ford Thunderbird is a so-called personal luxury car and pretty much originated the genre back in the 1950s. A slightly sporty car with a big emphasis on style and a long list of options to personalize it to your own desire. Throughout the decades the car adapted to the trends of those days. Every generation received a nickname, going from the space age bullet birds in the 60s to the gargantuan big birds in the 70s. When the US auto industry was hit by gas crisis and stricter emission controls, cars had to be downsized. This 1978 T-Bird is nicknamed the Torino Bird, riding on a smaller Ford Torino platform, abandoning the full-size Thunderbird platform and essentially being a successor to the Ford Elite. The car intended to compete with the cars like the Chrysler Cordoba and the equally downsized Chevrolet Monte Carlo. And yet what the car lost in weight and size, it retained under the hood. A massive 400 cubic inch or 6.6 .6 liter Cleveland V8 was the flagship engine, totally choked by emission standards, churning out an astonishing 160 horsepower. There are stables, smaller than this engine, that keep more horses. Now this is no ordinary Thunderbird. This was the day and age when Ford tried to capture the attention of the buying public by making one special edition after another. Think of the designer series and the collector series of Lincoln and this one, the Diamond Jubilee Edition, to celebrate the 75th anniversary of the Ford Motor Company. The Diamond Jubilee Edition featured virtually all the options and equipment available for the Thunderbird. Let's have a closer look at this long list. What did you get in 78? Oh, well, there we go already. <laughs> Stepping into the interior of uh, a Ford Thunderbird for 1978 is like being in the closet of Jay Leno. The Diamond Jubilee Edition is just executed in 50 shades of denim blue. It's a lean, mean jean machine. And um, well, it's pretty much like luxury is, is wood, is leather, is chrome. And all these ingredients, it's like that someone described to someone else what luxury is in order for them to go to a discount store to get the materials. Because <laughs> it has all the ingredients, but it's so poorly executed. I mean, the wood is, it's, it's plastic wood or wood applique. And it just has a sense of, of cheapness to it compared to what we are uh, used to today with, you know, with luxury cars. I mean, take the door for instance, you can see the screws. And it's just a, a, a plastic piece along with the, the fake wood and, and the triple layers of all kinds of, of materials. It really is the American way of, of doing things. Slapping two slim pieces of bacon on a burger and then calling it the, uh, the Grand Deluxe and then ask double the price for it. And I get it because it was the 70s. Ford and all the other car makers were busy spending their money on what was under the hood, you know, the safety regulations, the emission controls, and to make the car safer. So not a lot of money was left for what usually was most money spent on, interior design, um, up until the mid-60s, the interior quality. And uh, yeah, they really, they really dropped the ball with this. I mean, like I said, from a distance it looks luxurious, but when you get up close, <laughs> it's just, it feels a bit cheaper than, uh, than you might expect from the outside. It really is mass market luxury. Now, despite the poor execution of, you know, the cheap materials of the interior, with the Diamond Jubilee Edition, you did get a whole lot of equipment. In fact, when you chose the Diamond Jubilee Edition, you get almost the entire option list standard on a Thunderbird. And that's quite a lot. You get your usual stuff, like power everything, power steering, power brakes, power windows, power seats, uh, you know, power this, power that. But on top of that, you also get some interesting extra features like air conditioning, which doesn't work. Uh, you get extra set of gauges and dials, so not only your speedometer and your uh, fuel, but also some extra dials like clocks, which 
don't work. Um, you also get a moonroof where the sun comes through, which uh, doesn't work. And also comes with what I think is actually awesome, cruise control, which is integrated in the steering wheel. Uh, that's also kind of like the thing, you know, what you have in, in modern day cars as well. And so not like on the, on the turning stock or uh, like a stock on the, uh, on the steering column, but integrated on the steering wheel, which I think is very nice, which also doesn't work. And here is another thing that I don't get. For such a massive land yacht, and you can probably see the length of the car uh, underneath in the screen, you get no rear leg room. But what you do get is lots of space in the trunk. I'm not kidding. I can just lay down flat. On the outside, the Thunderbird is nothing to write home about. It has the classic late 70s deluxe brome styling with classical details like the ubiquitous waterfall grille, hidden headlights with Thunderbird logo, vinyl top with the so-called basket handle C-pillar, opera windows with the Jubilee inscription, and a rather blunt rear end styling. Massive horizontal taillights make up almost the entire rear end of the car. All in all, it looks a bit like a baby Lincoln Continental Mark V in an effort to look more upscale and posh. What makes the Diamond Jubilee Edition unique is this. The car's featured pinstriping along the entire length of the car, but it is broken up in the middle. If we take a closer look, we see letters. In this case, CP. These letters are the initials of the owner. Open the passenger door and it will reveal that there is a little 22 carat golden plaque on the dashboard with the owner's name written on it. Now, it doesn't really get any more personal than this, now does it? And his name? Car post. Now it's always a fun game to figure out who bought these cars back in the day. Who was Carl Post? I think Carl was an older gentleman and I got two solid reasons to think that way. Number one is, well let's just go to the commercials. Fellow man, give it to me straight. Do you suffer from erectile dysfunction? I know I do. That's why I decided to buy a Ford Thunderbird. See, when you own a Thunderbird, women don't care. They don't care about your performance in bed, they care about the performance of your Thunderbird. Take it from me, Edward from Ed Sauber Reviews. Get yourself a Thunderbird and all your problems are away. Thunderbird, for people that don't get stiff about their performance. Now, my second reason to think that way is that, despite being a downsized model, this car is still pretty huge. And I think eh, it probably takes about 15 minutes, like a 15 minute walk around the car. Now, considering that Carl was an older man, he might get senile and start to forget things. And I, I see him at home, he gets into his garage and he's greeted by this, you know, impressive waterfall grill and the Thunderbird logo. And he reminds himself, or that reminds himself that, oh, I got a beautiful Thunderbird. But then he starts to walk through the front door, the passenger door, and uh, well, it's like, what, five minute walk? And he probably forgets what car he drives. Now, Ford has an answer on that, because see, Ford made sure that every single surface on this car is fitted with a Thunderbird badge, so that when you walk to your door and you start to forget what car you drive, you get in and you see the logo and think, oh, thank God, I drive a Thunderbird. But you know what? Let's have a, um, a little walk around the car and count how many Thunderbird logos we can find. So join me on this little tour around the car where we're going to count the Thunderbird emblems. Um, number one, the hood ornaments. Number two, on the uh, hidden headlights. Uh, no logo on the cornering lamps. Uh, that's only for like the Lincoln Mark series. They had the Lincoln logo there, so two. The beautiful turban style wheels, it has a logo, so that's three. No emblem on the side, but you do have the Diamond Jubilee inscription right here with the, with the bird, so that's number four. Once again, not a wheel, that's number five. Come around to the back, number six, and it's mirrored, so that's number seven with a Thunderbird inscription in the middle. Makes it what, eight? I already lost count, doesn't matter, I believe it was like 20 or so. Here we get another one on the wheel, that's number nine. Another Diamond Jubilee edition inscription, that's ten. And then we come back to the front, another wheel, that's 11. And let's not forget, 12, 13. 
but that's not everything because let's go to the interior. Once again in the interior you're also reminded that you drive a Thunderbird every single moment of your drive because here we got number 14 I guess. Another one, 14 on the uh, steering wheel. You have your personalized plaque with the bird, that's 15. We got Thunderbird right next to it in case you forgot what this bird means, that's what, 16? And so we go to the, um, the seats, and let me move over for a moment, because every single seat is also fitted with a bird. 17, 18, 19, 20. 20 single times to let you know that you drive a Thunderbird. Not only yourself, but let the entire world know that you drive a Thunderbird. Okay, so you get a lot of equipment and a lot of bling bling. But how does it drive? Fires right up. Gotta love the um, see-through, uh, well, what is it, gear selection. You can see the needle behind the P, R and D selection. We're just going for a little cruise. I love the sound. That nice little rumble. You know what they say? Loud pipes save lives, but I beg to differ. I can already say that this is really my type of car. I'm going to use every single word that has been used many times by many car reviewers. It, it really drives like a cloud, like a boat. The, <laughs> the steering is not connected to the wheels at all. It, it, there is a lot of play in there. There is no direct feedback and you just waft along. <laughs> it, it leans in the corners. Oh, here we go. This is relaxed motoring. It's not only that, you know, it's also the, like the commanding hood right in front of you with the proud Thunderbird logo in the middle that points you to the right direction. And see, this is one of those cars where the, uh, the door is on the exact right height where you want it to be so that you can put your arm on it and that's, that's cruising and just going over speed bumps like it's butter? Water? As I always like to say, you can make driving a car as uh, stressful or relaxed experiences as you want it to be. And with a car like this, you're never in a hurry. See, I just, I'm, I'm barely going 20, 30, or like 40 in kilometers. And just, I, I'm in no hurry. Everybody can pass me. I don't care. I got a, a Jubilee edition Thunderbird. And I'm just enjoying this beautiful day with my arm out, cruising. The only thing that's missing is a nice little tune on the radio. But despite this relaxed driving experience, let's see what this 6.6 liter V8 can do. Okay. Okay. Not too bad. It, it advances, you know, it's, it's not as getting pushed back into your seat but it, everything just goes in in the same comfort like the suspension uh, you glide to 60 miles an hour so to answer the question from the intro is it a bird is it a plane nah this is more like a malaysia magpie or uh like a fat pigeon but a nice fat pigeon is the type of car americans craved for in the gloomy late 70s a car that allows you to forget the dark and scary outside world and invites you in a blue ocean of comfort silence and luxury